Hi guys, welcome to Lynette Looks. I am happy to be back with another video, another review, and today's review is going to be about the book The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. And I must say, I was this close to not reading the book after reading the first couple of pages because it initially starts off with well, I don't know if it's exactly to the point where it starts off at this this section where um, I believe his name is Philip and he he works with Stella and he was talking. No, actually, it doesn't he it doesn't start off with that. It starts off with the S an escort and he is on one of his dates and I just was like a little bit turned off by what was going on and i was like uh i don't think i'm going to continue reading this book but i'm glad i gave it the opportunity and i was able to get past that because obviously he's an escort i didn't know how much how much <laughs> he was going to do that in that first in that initial start i didn't know it was just gonna throw that in there right in the beginning but it kind of like threw me off um i don't know what i was thinking because it did say in the synopsis or in the the um plot of the the story that she does hire an escort but i guess i was not under the impression it was going to be that um uh explicit anyway um back to uh the initial part in the story okay so it starts off with him so it's an introduction to one of his um his dates it also starts off where you learn about stella lang and who she works with she has a a, a co-worker or a fellow co-worker that she's um with in this scene and they are talking and he's to he's talking like you know nonsense to her and saying that she's um uh, just really inappropriate stuff and i'm like who the hell is this guy why is he speaking to her like this totally harassment sexual harassment and i would have been complaining to hr like <laughs> what's going on here you know so he it introduces you to that character and he is just talking to her very dis in a disrespectful way and i i was like she should have just you know cursed him out or whatever and she didn't what she does for a living is she's an i believe it's called an economic tryst, which is she's basically very very good at math she's an expert uh in the subject of math and she comes up with uh, algorithms to predict customer purchases so I guess you would kind of see that for instance when you are on Amazon you'll they'll have like suggestions um, for you based on your previous purchases based on if you have a wish list so I'm thinking that's like an example of what she might be doing it follows her her life and she's described as extremely intelligent she is beautiful and she gets paid very well she doesn't have to worry about money at all helen huang the author uh explains it like she doesn't have any problems in that area and a matter of fact she has so much money that she doesn't know what to do <laughs> what to do with with it so wouldn't you want to have that problem it's like i'll take on that problem in a heartbeat um so anyway it follows her life and she is 30 years old and she is being pressured by her mom to, you know, have grand, her mom wants grandkids and her mom is wanting her to be in a relationship. And so Stella is, you know, feels the pressure of that because she's 30 years old and she does not feel like she has much dating experience. And also a little bit more background about Stella is that Stella has autism and she is a high functioning autistic person and because she has uh, autism she there are certain things that she doesn't like she she doesn't like to be in places that have very loud noises um it kind of throws her off and makes her a little nervous uh, uh, feel a little like out of it 
she has you know her quirks and stuff like that about her which you think are kind of cute you know about her and if you didn't know her very well you would think like you know there was nothing nothing about it you know that she was just like this funny quirky um intelligent super uh, nice person that's what i felt like getting to know her through through the story that she was she's just like a friend like i i was thinking oh she's such a nice person you know i wouldn't mind having having her as a friend so anyway she feels pressured um by her mom she thinks of things like very meticulously and so she's like how am i going to um you know be good at dating i don't feel like i'm good with dating i feel very like awkward and she has dated people but the relationships were nothing deep they kind of like just boys that were jerks and took advantage of her and i say boys because they were not um acting like mature men so um that her experience was not uh pretty or or nice when it comes to uh dating here enters michael fan and she has a number to an escort service she calls and i believe she gets michael fan or or just the agency sends her somebody and you know he, they're off to the first uh first meeting and she explains to him that she really would like um more dates and he's the type of uh, escort that he has rules and he doesn't like to have second and third dates or um anything to uh continue on a continual basis because that way they don't catch feelings and and he can move on to the next client i guess so in meeting him you know they get to know each other and stella does not um tell him that she has autism at all you know she keeps that under wraps but she does tell him exactly what she's looking for and she wants to have him as her like fake boyfriend so she can learn all about the dating scene and kind of get like more relaxed and and at ease in finding a, a person her person right so at first he is hesitant he doesn't really do that like uh have a client for that long however long like she needs him which she wants him to be her like fake boyfriend for a while and she's willing to pay him a good amount of money and he, at first he's hesitant but then he really does need the money and so he agrees that he is going to do it and he will be her fake boyfriend and so on and so forth you know go on dates with her etc I like the story. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. I wish the story had more conversation between them, a lot more dialogue between them, a lot more instances where they were outside of the bedroom. Um, because I swear, like half of the book was pretty much a lot of intimate scenes, and the the author Helen Huang was not shy at all um mentioning every single detail <laughs> that she could when it came to to those those scenes and so i i was like you know i could have done with a, a a lot less of that and more dialogue between them because i felt like both characters really were uh good together and you got to meet his family and she got to meet his family and there were a lot of like little quirky kind of funny but um you get to see stella in an element of uh, uncomfortableness around people like she has a little bit of like social i say social anxiety or like she's she's kind of you know awkward sometimes when she has conversation not so much to so a point where you're like looking at her like what the heck but there was a, a a moment with his family that even he was like oh my god <laughs> like what's going on here you know like it was almost comedic because she she's offending she offended them without like wanting to offend them obviously like she's not trying to be rude and it was at the dinner table and i kind i was like wow you know i wish i was that bold like what she was saying she wasn't like saying anything like super um crazy or outlandish but sometimes you know you with social graces you don't want to like say certain things that you would want 
um, especially first meeting somebody, like she said, oh, are you going to stick that in the microwave? Like, the, did you know that plastic um, goes into the food and and you're going to eat that? And his mother was like, oh, I've been doing this for years. Not a problem. And then she goes to serve. I might as well tell you uh, that particular scene. She goes to serve Stella in the plastic bowl. And Stella's like, I'm not eating that. <laughs> I'm not eating that out of that plastic. You're going to have to uh, do that again or whatever. And so Michael um, says, mom, don't worry about it. I'm going to, you know, whip her up uh, another, another uh, uh, dish without microwaving it. Um, so I thought that was really like her honesty, I felt was super refreshing. It's like, oh, that's something that I would be thinking like, you can give me the microwavable microwave food. I don't use microwaves, but you know, I know like a lot of people do, but I could agree with Stella on that point. Um, and she kind of like, she felt like, oh, afterwards she was like, oh my God, she's just sticking her foot in her mouth like so many times, but she didn't like, it's like so innocent that you don't not like her because of what it's like so innocent that it becomes like oh wow like um almost endearing because you know she doesn't mean to to be rude about it she gets to meet his family he gets to meet her parents and he gets to meet um this other guy he, he's a real jerk named philip and he's a good friend of the family and i believe he is the same guy that was at her office talking all this smack to her all nasty. And because like they're all very wealthy, they're kind of looking down at Michael. Like he doesn't look like he's um, should be with her and all that. And, and very like, you know, the, the typical um, rich, uh, rich and poor and, and the rich people are like, like, what are you doing here? It kind of reminded me of Pretty Woman very loosely because i love pretty woman it's one of my favorite movies but the the plot the story kind of was pretty woman in reverse like the reversal where the guy is the escort and he has all these rules like they can't get too close and all these things like that um and obviously he gets hired just like just like um julia roberts and stays with her for for a while and eventually they kind of you know catch feelings and stuff like that and it becomes a, a cute story where you know they they fall in love and stuff but again it's loosely because i didn't like the book as much as i love pretty woman nothing beats that there's no like second pretty woman or or, or match to that but this is very very loosely similar to that kind of story so anyway, you get to see the family, you get to see her her family, which the mother was not very accepting at all because she wants her to be within the same class as, as Stella. They're all wealthy and stuff like that. If you're going to read this book, expect there to be a lot of detail when it comes to um, all the fiery scenes, if you know what I mean. Again, I wish they had more dialogue between the two because I really enjoyed their relationship and I wanted it to get a little bit, um, more in more depth than, than what it, it was. But in any case, it's a cute book. If you, you're looking for something, uh, kind of a fun, a fun read, a quick read. So I gave it three stars on Goodreads. And I'm, I am happy that I read it because it was one of the most popular uh, rated books. So I wanted to go ahead and see what the hype was about. And honestly, I wasn't impressed. I thought like, wow, this is it. But I think it's because of all the fire, fire scenes <laughs> in the book that, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It could be everything, but like there was a lot. I mean, the book is more than half of that, I think. So I, w I was kind of shocked because the cover looks so innocent and sweet and nice. And then I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is like fire. There's so many fires in this book. But um, in any case, uh, lots of steam, lots of steamy scenes. A little background about the author, which I thought was really interesting because I was wondering why she chose for Stella to have autism. It's actually personal to her because she was diagnosed with autism a little before she wrote this book. So she decided that she wanted to 
um, grab from her own personal experiences and put it in this book. I don't know directly if there were particular scenes or anything like that from her personal life, but she said in an interview with National Public Radio Network that because she had just recently had been uh, diagnosed with autism uh, prior to writing that book, she was still trying to come to terms with, you know, being autistic and what that meant for her. I found it very interesting. It totally answered my my question on why um, she decided to. There's nothing wrong with that, but I was just interested. It's interesting to know that that was why um, she put that in the book because of her own uh, personal experience with autism. And if you want to read more on the article, I will definitely put the link in the bio so you can read it as well. So anyway, guys, that's my take on the Kiss Quotient. It was good. It wasn't great. I didn't really see uh, why it was um, rated one of the most popular other than the fact that there are lots of... Um, lots of steamy scenes maybe I, I maybe that was it like i i don't know but i didn't think that it was that worthy to be one of the popular ones um anyway that's my own opinion but i didn't not like it i did like it i thought it was cute i thought it was a nice fun fast read and i'm glad that i read it after reading the article with her i decided to read the second book in the series i believe there's uh three books in the series so i did finish the second book and i must say that the second book is well worth reading definitely i would not pass the second book up i would recommend it and the second book is called the bride test and i really enjoyed this book it's a totally different style they have different characters i thought it was gonna have the same characters as the kiss quotient so i was interested to know like you know what did these guys get married or, or anything like that but no this is a standalone book and i really enjoyed that one way more so that's gonna be my next book review and i can't wait to talk about that one if you like this video give me a thumbs up and support my channel by subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time a new video comes out on my channel so on that note guys i will see you on the next one